Welcome to More Living with Jim Brogan, your source of information for living the best years of your life, your way. For more than a decade, host Jim Brogan and his expert guests have come together each week to share important news and advice that can impact the lives and well-being of those who are retired and those nearing retirement. Learn about issues like health and fitness, financial planning, social security benefits, investment advice, and more. And now, here's the host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Good morning, East Tennessee, and welcome to More Living with Jim Brogan, where it's all about living the best years of your life your way. This is News Talk 98.7 WOKI, and you know, when I look back on 2020, you know, I know it's been a challenging year. Many of you probably want to forget the year. It's just we've had the global pandemic. We've had an economic crisis. You know, it's it. One of the things that I've seen though is that there's it's really highlighted human compassion and our desire to help those in need. I've seen people throughout East Tennessee really rally, and 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 frankly, we've seen it all around the country. We've seen a lot of direct involvement with charitable outreach. We've also seen a lot of people indirectly help at doing little things like, you know, paying their housekeeper to come once a week even when their housekeeper can't come once a week, or trying to patronize a local establishment to help keep them in business even when it may not be the best thing to do. So I think we, as especially here in East Tennessee, we have that volunteer spirit. You know, people have gotten very creative and found ways to give to those in need. And the giving spirit is one of the best things about humans and especially about us here in America. And one of the things that I've talked about over the years is the power of giving in a financial plan. That it's not just, you know, how it impacts lives, but it's also critically important in your financial plan. And I think one of the most important reasons for that is because so many people, especially in our society here in America, they struggle with money and life balance. You know, money, money is not, it's just, it's just a tool. It's, it shouldn't be the end goal. And, you know, we're constantly bombarded in a materialistic society. And so I think in, including giving in our plan is so important, not only for helping those that, that have needs beyond our own, uh, but it helps keep that money-life balance and that relationship with our money. Uh, I'm very, very excited to have a special guest with us today. We have Robin King with us. Robin is the CEO of the Navy SEAL Foundation. Uh, she's been working for the Navy SEAL Foundation since its inception in 2000 and began serving as CEO in 2013. And so she's dedicated her career to working on behalf of Navy SEALs and Gold Star families and veterans. And as many of you know, you know, that's a charity that I help support every year. They have the Tampa Bay Frogman every year in January. I've done that for five years uh, and counting. And it's just a tremendous organization. So for the first half of this show, I want to talk about the Navy SEAL Foundation and what she's been seeing with charitable giving, because it has been, you know, it's things we can learn for how we can step up and help those in times of need. So, Robin, good morning. It's so great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. What a great introduction. Oh, absolutely. Well, the, Naval Spe the, the, the Navy SEAL Foundation and the work they do for the Naval Special Warfare Command is so phenomenal. And, you know, like I said, I've been involved with the foundation through the Tampa Bay Frogman uh, for several years and seen firsthand the types of lives that this, this great charity impacts. Can you just tell our listeners a little bit more about the Navy SEAL Foundation? What's its purpose? What's its mission? How does it help families? Yeah, thank you. Um, the Navy SEAL Foundation is a national 501c3 nonprofit, and our mission is to provide immediate and ongoing support to the Naval Special Warfare community and its families. That includes our U.S. Navy SEALs, our Special Warfare Combatant Craft crewmen, who also are also known as our boat drivers, and the entire active duty tech community that surrounds the SEALs and the SWICs. Um, we have, as you said, have been in existence since 2000, so 20 years. 
And during that time, our programs have really evolved and changed as we have stayed really closely connected to the commands, the families, and the community, um, and listened to their needs. And we have been lucky enough to have incredible donors who have enabled us to be able to do that year after year. Now, one thing, Robin, that I talk about uh, in in addition to charitable giving is who do we give to, and and that you know we should number one be passionate about the causes we're serving and that we're giving to, but also that they are very fiscally responsible and frugal, and that they're you know is the money going to impact the lives of those that are being served by the charity, and the Navy Seal Foundation is as good as any. Can you talk a little bit like if? For every hundred dollars that the Navy SEAL Foundation brings in, how much goes to support actual families that you're serving, and how do you maintain uh, that lean operation that you have so that you can give the majority of the dollars to SEALs and their families? Well, we quote it uh, as cents on a dollar, and 94 cents of every dollar raised goes directly to our programs or is retained for future program use. Uh, we have been rated with four stars from Charity Navigator, who is the number one uh, top dog, watchdog um, charity uh, reviewing organization. We've been rated with four stars for the last nine years, and we have received a perfect score of 100 for transparency, fiscal accountability for the last four years. Uh, we're really yeah, I just proud want to mention numbers. there, Robin, that four star is the highest rating. Yeah, yeah, it is, and, and we're really proud of that. You know, I think you mentioned something very important. You know, people really should do their homework on, on who they're giving to, and I would suggest you go to Charity Navigator, GuideStar, some of those great organizations to spend their time making sure that we all have a lot of information about the different charities that exist. You know, we really focus on the trust that our donors are giving us when they give us a dollar or a hundred or a thousand or more. Um, it's our responsibility to do the best we can with those dollars in supporting our community. And we work to leverage uh, our partners. We leverage the government. We spend the dollars that we need to spend on our community. We make sure that our programs are actually meeting a need. Um, you know, we don't just decide it would be great if we spent more dollars in, you know, a certain area and do that without having done our research. You know, we talk to the fans, we talk to the families. We really want to understand what it is that everybody is going through and that we're creating programs that, you know, help with resiliency and strength and peace of mind. And we've been really successful at doing that over the last 20 years. And I think we've gotten smarter every year and, you know, we listen. And I think that's what really help separate us. So Robin, talk a little bit. I, I want to really help our listeners understand exactly how you just maybe a couple of examples of ways you support families of SEALs that have been killed in action or killed in training. You know, if, uh, if, if, if a SEAL is serving, and I know one year in the Tampa Bay Frogman, I saved, I swam for a gentleman that had been shot down in Afghanistan, and he had a, a wife back home who was uh, expecting their first child. So, you know, yeah. in that type of a horrible situation, t tell us how the Navy SEAL Foundation steps in to help that family. Well, what these families go through is unimaginable. I mean, whether it's just generally wounded, severely wounded, or we, we suffer the loss of a, an active duty um, Naval Special Warfare person, it is it's tragic and it's tough. And those first few days after the immediate tragedy, you know, happens, the foundation is there to really try to relieve the stress from the families, right? You don't want them to have to think about um, small things. It should just happen for them. You don't go ask somebody who's in the middle of that fog what it is you need because they don't know what they need. They wouldn't even know how to answer the question, and we've seen that for years. We've gotten really good at knowing what the needs are, whether that's getting their family there, getting them to a bedside, uh, taking care of uh, a particular issue with their home, knowing that there's going to be, you know, 100 people showing up tomorrow to bring you food and to be there with you. And, you know, you have a, a giant hole in your ceiling from a leak that happened last week, which was nothing to do with what happened now, but 
you feel the need to take care of those things. So it can be some really varied things, and, and it's unique by each different case. Um, you know, long term with those families, with our survivors, you know, they've become part of the Navy SEAL Foundation forever. We do spouse retreats, parent retreats, sibling retreats. We support with mortgage support. We support with you know tax assistance. What a death does to your tax situation is tremendously disruptive, and things that you you know normal you don't normally have to think about. Uh, understood that you know your income, and it can be very very different. We want to help these families feel secure and prepared. We do special programs for our kids our gold star kids, um, connecting them to each other. You know, unfortunately, like you said, there, there are a lot of them. Um, and we've had some losses where we had uh, a great number of very small children that now are, you know, getting into their teen years and our programs grow and develop with these kids. So, you know, there are similarities in all these things, but we really do treat each one uh, independently and we, you know, talk to the families and we listen and we um, we just are there. You know, they know that the Navy SEAL Foundation has their back, that we are that that strong uh, pillar of support during this time. And when in doubt, we always tell them to ask us for what they need. Now, that sounds absolutely tremendous, the support you provide. You mentioned, Robin, you know, even uh, commanders that are, or warriors that are injured or severely injured even. And... I know, you know, PTSD is such a significant factor now for those that are returning from, you know, from war. Uh, talk a little bit about how you support warriors that are coming back that have either physical injuries or mental challenges with PTSD. Well, our active duty is really supported well through Naval Special Warfare Command and the resources they have. And so if there is an active duty service member that needs some support for a a brain health issue or a mental health issue or PTSD, we work directly with the commands and their medical teams to do that. If they wanted to go outside of the military system, the Navy SEAL Foundation can step up and get them to a particular clinic or that kind of thing. Uh, When it comes to our veterans, you know, we can go directly to the service member. And we do see guys that have been that have been carrying these loads, you know, for a long, long time. And then when they get out and they transition to their civilian life, sometimes these things start to, you know, come to the surface and they have to deal with um, the challenges of the last 20 years. And the Navy SEAL Foundation has some incredible partners um, in terms of some, you know, evidence-based modalities to ensure that these guys can get some great therapy, some great uh, examinations so they understand the situation that they are in and what their personal needs are. But we're also looking at towards the future with alternatives. Uh, the Navy SEAL Foundation just issued a press release about some work we're doing now in clinical studies. Uh, so we are helping fund a phase three clinical study on MDMA and its use with PTSD, and the results are looking really, really great. And to think that, you know, we can help advance science by getting behind some of these newer, um, you know, alternatives would be really incredible. If you think that, you know, PTSD could potentially be solved for a good amount of people through doing, through using some of these uh, drugs that hadn't previously been used in these areas, we're really excited about that. Yeah, that's very, that sounds very, uh, very exciting developments. We're visiting with Robin King. She's the CEO of the Navy SEAL Foundation. And, you know, we're talking about the power of giving. You know, Tuesday, December 1st, is Giving Tuesday. And so uh, I think it's important to remember some of those around us that have needs. And when we come back, I'm going to visit with Robin a little bit uh, about how their fundraising efforts are done, how they've been affected by the pandemic, and how can we step up and help. So please stay tuned as we visit with Robin King of the Navy SEAL Foundation. This is More Living with Jim Brogan on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. You are listening to More Living with Jim Brogan. 
During the week, Jim is a financial advisor, an author and speaker with an MBA from the University of Tennessee, who specializes in helping people in or near retirement plan for the next phase of their lives. You can reach Brogan Financial during the week at 865-862-6800 or on the web at broganfinancial.com. And now, here's Senior Market Advisor Magazine's 2011 National Advisor of the Year and host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Welcome back. This is More Living here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm your host, Jim Brogan, and you know, this Tuesday, December 1st, is Giving Tuesday. And you know, with everything going on in 2020, I don't know what, I, what I've seen around us here in East Tennessee and even around the country is a lot of people stepping up and remembering others that have a, a lot of needs. And, you know, I'm very, very excited to have Robin King on with us this morning. She is the CEO of the Navy SEAL Foundation, a tremendous charitable group that serves the, that, that serves the families of SEALs and, and, and the Naval Special Warfare Command. And it's just incredible what they do. Uh, if you if you miss that first segment, for every dollar that they raise, 94 cents of every dollar goes directly to benefit uh, the people that they're serving, which is just phenomenal. Charity Navigator typically talks about, you know, in most charities, they, they want at least 85 cents on the dollar to go, would be considered very, very good. Uh, this organization does 94 cents on the dollar. Um, you know, Robin, I've talked about you know, the Tampa Bay Frogman Swim, which I've been involved with for now, now for five years. I know it's a, it's a big event and a big fundraiser for you uh, where we swim a 5K across Tampa Bay in usually pretty cold water to raise money. And I know mm -hmm. 100% of the money raised goes directly to benefit the foundation. Talk a little bit about that fundraising event and how impactful and unique it is in helping the Navy SEAL Foundation. The Tampa Bay Frog Band Swim is just such a fun and incredible event. You know, we're on a, the 12th Frog Band Swim this year in 2021, and that's just so hard to believe. Uh, it was started by a, a group of people there in Tampa Bay that have the connections to the SEAL community, and their passion for supporting our SEAL is just unmatched. And they came up with this open water swim concept, and they have grown to be, I think, one of the biggest uh, fundraising open water swims in the country. And as you know, I mean, you swim it. It's a, it's a fun event. It's a great event. Oh, they yeah. really take the time to, to honor the Gold Star um, families and the guys that we've lost over the years. I know at times, you know, people have, uh, you know, they get a name of who they're swimming for and a background on that warrior. And it's so powerful to you know, have that name with you while you're swimming in this event um, and to think about that family. And, and sometimes those family members are there and the swimmers get to, to meet these families. And it's a very moving um, experience. Um, and it really is. And about the water and the seals. Yeah, and, and where this whole thing evolved from. I mean, seals and swimming, and, and undersea efforts are a big part of what they do. So to... To mirror that in this fundraising event is really phenomenal. Yeah, and it's cold, you know. I mean, the water temperature in Tampa Bay in January is, you know, usually in the upper 50s or low 60s, which is really cold water to swim in. So it's just really cool because it just kind of, I don't know, it all fits so well with, with the idea of what Navy SEALs do for us and, and really any special warriors. Um, what are some of your other top fundraising events, Robin? Gosh, we have so many incredible events. You know, I was looking at our um, our regional and major events earlier today, and we have 23 scheduled for 2021. So things all over the country. I think we have five in the Northeast. We've got five in the Northwest. Um, we've got gala events, you know, New York and L.A. and um, Hawaii and Chicago area, Denver, those are all, you know, the dinner style events with great speakers and some some auctions. Um, those go a long way to raise a lot of money for us over, you know, each year. But we also, you know, like the Tampa Bay Frogman Swim, have a lot of athletic events. Um, it it just is a natural fit for this community and for the families, and you know, our donors really enjoy being a part of that. 
We've also spent a good amount of effort in the last few years creating some incredible partnerships. We've got Reebok, we've got Luminox uh, watches, we've got Fitvine Wine, all coming through for us on a regular basis with thousands and thousands of dollars in support. And additionally, like Reebok, they will they help with our kids camp. You know, they get gear out there for the. Um, a lot of our partners go above and beyond just, just money, and they do that, and we create opportunities for them to get involved and to um, let the kids about what these guys are doing for us every day. Yeah. You know, Robin, I mentioned, um, you know, the challenges with the pandemic, with COVID-19, and I know certainly early on there was some tremendous concern and continues to be in the charitable community about the ability to raise funds and do the things that you do to serve the people that you serve. Uh, what, what, what kind of challenges have you seen at the Navy SEAL Foundation and what other problems have, and challenges have you seen facing other charities during this difficult time? The, the Navy SEAL Foundation has been really lucky this year. I mean, we've got such a fantastic donor base. So while we've had to cancel uh, a few in-person events. We've held some virtual events that have been really great. Um, we were lucky enough to have our very large New York event right before the world got crazy in early March, and that was really important to us. Um, but we have, we've been focusing for a while on really a direct donor connection. And so in some of these areas where we haven't been able to hold the actual gala, you know, our donors have still stepped up in in the exact same way they had in the past, just without attending the dinner, which, you know, my gosh, that just says so much about these people. It says a lot about how they feel about the Navy SEAL Foundation and the support we're providing. Uh, we're just so lucky to have such a great group of people. And I, you know, I think we continue to reach out all over the place through social through, uh, you know, our email blasts, et cetera, to continually expand our base. And if we can tell our story, um, people really step up. Now, it's been a tough year, you know. I know I know. there's a number of organizations that work in this space that have had to completely suspend support because they just don't have the funding. We actually have stepped in and helped um, at least one organization over the hump because they had made commitments uh, to the community that they weren't going to be able to fulfill, and, and we were lucky enough to be able to say we can support that. So, um, you know, I think it's – I think 2021 is going to be hopefully back, but it's, it may take half a year, right? Things may be really pushed in the last half of the year. So I guess everybody who's listening – don't be surprised if July through December you're hit up a whole lot more than you were in 2020 yeah. because everybody's going to be stepping back up. Yeah. You know, there's been some talk, Robin, about um, what may happen in the future with, uh, you know, what Washington, D.C. and what Congress does with the charitable deduction for giving, for doing charitable giving. And I know it's a big concern in the okay. charitable community. Are you concerned about that? Um, you know, I know that to me, number one, our donations and, and where we give our time should be about what we're most passionate about. And, and I would think if people are following that, they're going to continue to be passionate. Uh, but, but what are some of the concerns on the horizon, do you think, that we need to be aware of? I think you're right. I think most people who give to us are giving to us because of what we do. They're not just looking for a tax deduction. You know, the rules changed, and I think 2017 saw the biggest spike in charitable giving um, in history because everybody was anticipating, a, you know, these tax changes. And, you know, we saw a huge spike in 17 that didn't didn't come to be again in 18 and 19, but, um, but we're doing great. Uh, going forward, you know, I just have faith in the American people that, that uh, people aren't just giving for those reasons. I think tax laws are going to change, and they may go up or may go down. Who who knows at this point? Um, I hope more of the impact are in other areas than in charitable giving. I think it's so incredibly important to set our charities up for success, and laws that work against that, you know, aren't ideal. 
But um, like I said, I just I have a lot of faith in, in the people who want to give because they're giving they're giving with their heart. They're not really giving so much with their wallet, if that makes any sense. I think that's a great word. Absolutely. Uh, my last question for you, Robin, is just with the pandemic. Um, have you had it? Have you seen an increase in need of the actual families you serve because of the pandemic? Um, and we created some programs. Guys over that could not get home because of the, because of what was going on in the virus. Plus, guys who couldn't get out the door, and you're expecting your your spouse to deploy on Wednesday, and then it gets moved to a week later, and a week later, and a week later. And that may sound great. You may think, oh gosh, well, my husband didn't leave. That's wonderful, but it's incredibly stressful. Um, so the foundation stepped up with some additional child care things, some, some programs for families who may have additional needs. If you've got a spouse who's also a, an emergency responder, a nurse, that kind of thing, and your husband's deployed, she may be working just incredible hours. So we wanted to make sure that we had the ability to help them out in different ways, and we instituted some programs that would help those families, the families who deployed, a little bit more than they're helped in the past. And it, the, the feedback was great, and we continue that through the end of the year right now, and we'll reassess when 2021 starts is what we need to keep doing. That sounds absolutely great. Uh, Robin King with the Navy SEAL Foundation, such a great organization that benefits uh, some really deserving people and needy and people that need our help and uh, just efficiently run 94 cents on the dollar going directly to benefit the families of those that you serve. Um, Robin, thank you for taking time with us today. How can people find out more about the Navy SEAL Foundation? Our website, NavySEALFoundation.org. And all of our social media, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, lots of information out there. Or you can always give our office a call, 757-757. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choke on the number right now because I never call my own number. It's on the website. <laughs> Let's just do it that way. Okay. So Navy, I'll give you someone else's right. number and they get random calls. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so NavySealFoundation.org. Such a tremendous organization. I've seen firsthand the, the power of this organization. So, Robin, thank you so much for being uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. That's Robin King, CEO of the Navy SEAL Foundation. Now, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about the power of giving as we approach Giving Tuesday this, this uh, coming week. Uh, and talk about the importance in a financial plan. And then I do want to talk about how we can be smart about how we do it from a tax perspective. Uh, as we were discussing, I think the most important thing is you want to be passionate and support causes. And I think the most important thing there is how that impacts the lives of those that you're serving and how it then impacts your life to be involved in those things. If we can be smart about it, uh, from a tax perspective, it certainly makes sense to do that because there are a lot of tools available that we can use. So when we come back, we'll dive into some of that. So stay tuned. This is More Living with Jim Brogan on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Through his weekly radio show, television news appearances, and adult education classes taught at the University of Tennessee and Pellissippi State Community College, Jim taps into his extensive knowledge and experience to address issues important to living your best retirement. Join Jim every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI and visit him online at broganfinancial.com. And now, here's the host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Good morning, and thank you so much for listening. Again, this is More Living with Jim Brogan right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI, where it's all about living the best years of your life your way. And I think one of the most important things in our financial plan is to plan how we're going to give. You know, the reality is there are a lot of people around us, both locally and around the country and even internationally, that don't have the opportunities that we have. And if there's any way we can help, well, I really think we should. Number one, um, you know, it, it, it is a tremendous need to serve others that, that need help. 
Uh, the other thing is it, it really blesses our own lives beyond, we, we get back tenfold. And I don't necessarily mean you're going to get back financially tenfold. You may. But most importantly, the rewards, the emotional side, especially if you get involved with the charities you're giving to and you can see the impact you're making with your dollars, uh, it can really impact your life. And money-life balance is so difficult uh, for so many people in America, you know, we have such a materialistic society. Every, everywhere you turn, you, you know, you just see things and stuff. And I think giving helps you keep a perspective on money-life balance. So what do you do if you're not currently giving and you'd like to give, but you're at your budget and you're like, well, Jim, I just don't know how I can give. You know, what's a good target? How can I get started? And I think for me... You know, I, I'm, I'm, first off, if you're a young person, as soon as you get your first job, start giving out of your paycheck. And I do think we want to all set a goal to, as much as we can, get to 10% of our income. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons for that, but uh, I think that's a good goal. But, you know, if you haven't been giving much and you would like to do more, um, then you just got to start. Maybe you start giving 2%. And then next time you get a raise, you know what? Keep some of that raise for yourself. You should. And, and we want to scratch an itch. But then give a, a nice chunk of that raise to where you can start giving more and more. And before you know it, you can turn around and you're giving a nice, you know, some nice stuff uh, and really making some impact. Um, so I think you just have to start small especially when you already have a budget and start building it in that way. Now, we also want to be smart about how we give. So I've got several things here that I want to talk about, about th things you may not have thought of that could, that could really be a nice benefit for charity and can give you a tax deduction. And then I also want to talk about how you can be the smartest you possibly can about giving from a tax perspective. So I think the first thing is you need to make a plan and plan your giving. You know, that's something sitting down and deciding what do you believe in, what are you passionate about, what do you want to give to, and how do you want to impact lives. And even if it's starting small, anything at all is, is helpful. Uh, be sure that you keep copies of receipts of everything that you give. Because when you claim a donation like that, you have to be able to prove it to the IRS if you're audited, you know, if they ask. So always keep a copy of your donations. And if you always make sure to get a receipt from the charity, like not just a canceled check, but a receipt from them, hey, thank you for making this donation, the amount, the date, all that stuff. And be sure to keep those records and keep them organized. Uh, also remember you can donate house goods. Uh, sometimes we have things around the house we're not using. You know, I know CARM has such a great ministry here in Knoxville with clothing, you know, they, they, with, where they can sell clothing and raise money to benefit the homeless. Mission of Hope has such a tremendous ministry. There's a lot of ways we can give to these organizations value of things that we have that we don't really use anymore, and they can use those things uh, to benefit the families and the people that they serve. Uh, don't forget about vehicle expenses. And, you know, I want to mention one thing. If you have an old vehicle that's just really not worth much, you know, you might could get a better value giving that to charity than if you sold it and gave the money to charity, or even maybe if you just sold it. The tax benefit of giving it to charity and taking a market value deduction might actually be higher than selling the car and getting the cash. Um, another thing is... You know, when you give an appreciated asset, especially one you've depreciated yourself. So let's say you own a business and you have a piece of heavy equipment and you've depreciated that piece of equipment. You know, if you sell it, you have to pay a recapture of the depreciation, typically about 25%. So you have to pay that money. Well, if you give that money... If you give that piece of equipment to a charity and let them sell it, then not only do you get the value of that tax deduction, you avoid the recapture of that depreciated tax basis. So there's a lot of things that we can do to be smart. 
you know, we can be, be careful about how we have carryover deductions or carryover capital losses or capital, you know, on our tax returns. You know, our tax planning, this is a great time of the year to be doing tax planning and looking at how all that stuff is coordinated and works together. And if you're cognizant about carry forwards, you know, if you, there's a limit to how much you can write off in a given year for charitable donation. Now, uh, this year only, they raise that cap. You can actually write off 100% of your adjusted gross income. You could give it as a cash gift to charity uh, and get a full write-off. But usually you're limited to 60%. And if you're giving something like a stock or a piece of equipment, you could end up being limited uh, to even less of a deduction. Well, you can carry forward those tax deductions for a period of several years well, if you've got a large carry forward, you should be smart about all of your tax planning. It doesn't mean just, you know, how you handle charitable contributions in the future. You have a loss you can take on your tax return every year, and you can coordinate other legal planning. You could do Roth conversion and help, all, and that would raise your adjusted gross income. You could get more of a write-off on your capital gain carry forward, capital loss carry forward or your charitable deduction carry forward. You know, you could really take advantage of those kinds of things. So, you know, unfortunately, the tax preparation that we do every year, we do it in the spring. And we're looking in the rearview mirror at things that have already happened. Tax planning, to the contrary, is looking forward. And typically, this is the time of the year we should be doing a lot of tax planning. Do you have charitable deduction carry forwards that you could do other things to maximize the effectiveness of those deductions. Or again, if you have capital loss carry for all those kinds of things. So there's just some tremendous opportunities uh, to where you can not only impact those that need help, but you can then be do it in a smart way that can really impact your tax return and, and save even more. So today, uh, you know, we're talking about the power of giving. Uh, the first half of the show, we visited with Robin King. She is the CEO of the Navy SEAL Foundation, such a great organization that benefits Navy SEAL community and their families of soldiers, that have, warriors that have, that have been injured or killed. And uh, it's just, you can go to NavySEALFoundation.org to find out more information. Uh, when we come back, I want to cover more specific strategies to maximize the power of your charitable donation from a tax perspective. So I'm going to expand that, expand on that a little bit more with some strategies you may not be aware of. So stay tuned. This is More Living with Jim Brogan, only on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Thank you for listening to More Living with Jim Brogan. If you miss any of today's show or want to listen to it again, visit broganfinancial.com where you can access the podcast and other educational materials to help you in your journey through retirement. And now, here's Senior Market Advisor Magazine's 2011 National Advisor of the Year and host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's More Living here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. And uh, we're talking about the power of giving today. And uh, I do want to mention, check us out on the website, broganfinancial.com. First off, if you want to talk about how to incorporate giving into your financial plan. Do it in a way that maximizes impact, and then, hey, let's be smart and minimize income taxes. We can do an, a, an analysis of that for you. Give us a call, 865-862-6800. Again, that's 862-6800. Or you can uh, email us, info at broganfinancial.com. You can also go to my website at broganfinancial.com and sign up for a complimentary consultation. Uh, my upcoming classes, my next class is um, Financial Survival for Retirement at the University of Tennessee. Two two-part classes, adult education at the non, uh, non-credit adult education outreach at the University of Tennessee. It's on Thursday, January the 28th and February the 4th. Uh, it's about to open up for registration. However, if you go, it's not quite open yet at the University of Tennessee, but if you go to my website at broganfinancial.com, click on classes, you can click to learn more, and you can uh, sign up to be notified as soon as that class goes online and you can register for that class, uh, where I just share as much as I can 
to help you make informed and prudent decisions to impact the quality of your life. So we're talking about the power of giving today, and I just think giving is so important. And I want to cover a few more tips of things you may not be aware of that could help you not only maximize the impact of your gift, but also minimize your income taxes so you can benefit as much as possible from the gift even financially. So one idea is to bunch your donations. You know, with the, sta- with the standard deduction increasing as much as it has to almost $25,000 for a joint couple and over 12000 for a single filer, uh, you know, according, according to the CPA boards, you know, over 90% of people now, or excuse me, to the IRS, uh, according to the IRS, over 90% now are not itemizing. So if you're, if you're not itemizing... You should still give to charity, but if you make a $5,000 gift to charity, you're really not getting any tax value for that gift. But if you bunch the donations, you know, and then, in, and then are smart about how you include other deductible items like property tax, sales tax on large purchases, buying a car, and you're smart about how you plan to bunch these activities into one year. And then maybe, so, you know, you don't pay your property tax this year. You pay it in January. But then you pay it again in December. So you get two of them in there, and then you bunch all your charitable deductions into that year and make two years of gifts in one year. Now, yeah, we want to make sure the charities we support are financially solvent. If we're smart about how we do it, though, we can be very, very effective with bunching donations. Another thing we can do to be effective is use what's called a donor-advised fund. A donor-advised fund. And it's basically a fund that you set up. You're the donor, and it is considered a legal... Technically, it's considered a charitable entity. So when you put the money in there, it's not yours anymore, but you're the donor. But it is money you sent in, and you get the deduction now, and then you can designate what charities are going to get it down the road and when they're going to get it. So if you wanted to bunch a bunch of charitable donations into 2019, you could set up a don, but you're not sure where you want to send it to yet or you want to spread it out over a period of a couple of years for the charities themselves, you could set up a donor-advised fund, put all the money in there now, and then give over the next few years uh, to to get all those benefits. So that's another idea. And by the way, we can help you set up a donor advised fund if you uh, give us a call at 865-862-6800. Donating appreciated assets is especially powerful. If you have appreciated stock, appreciated real estate, anything that's gone up in value, you know, if you sell that item or that property, you have a capital gains tax. But if you donate the property or the, or the stock or the the item, whatever it is, if you donate it directly to church or charity, then you now avoid the capital gains tax in addition to getting the charitable tax deduction. So again, it's all part of being smart about this. And then, of course, always uh, be cognizant that if you are in, if you're 70 and a half or older, you can give money directly from your IRA to charity or church. And it is not a taxable distribution. If you're 72 or older, it does count towards your required minimum distribution, which, of course, will start back next year. So it's a very effective way, if you're not itemizing, especially, to get the power of that deduction by giving it from an IRA, which normally would be taxable to you, and give it directly to the charity. It comes straight off of page one on your income taxes because it offsets that taxable distribution completely. Today we've talked about the power of giving because a greater community and a greater sense of giving to others provides for more living so you can live the best years of your life your way. Thank you for tuning in. Check us out at broganfinancial.com. Thank you, Chris, running the board. Thank you, Jill, producing the show. This is More Living with Jim Brogan, only on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. 
The views expressed by Jim Brogan and his guests are not that of Cumulus Media. Any discussion of financial, legal, and tax planning strategies is not intended to be individualized advice and is general in nature. Always consult with your advisor for advice specific to your needs. This program's content does not represent a recommendation of any particular security, strategy, or investment by Jim Brogan or Brogan Financial Incorporated.